Welcome back to When Hits the Fan, starring yours truly, Mr. Opinion, along with the great Fred. How are you doing today, Fred? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm just keeping it uh, trailville for real. All oh. right. <laughs> so, also in the building, the one and only, the man with the tinfoil kufi, Roscoe Pico Train. What's happening, people? I'm in the building for Lucky 13. Hey, 13, keeping it real mean, you know what I mean? All right. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we're doing today. Yeah, I'm, I'm on. A, I'm on a roll. I'm. 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 I'm, 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 I'm riffing. I'm riffing. Trying I'm riffing. To, to rhyme some words, huh? Do you, man? Hey, you know what? It's for the people. It's for the people. You I'm know. Fine. The NBA season is what four games left in yep. the in the process. What are, what is that? What are storylines standing out to you? I have a I have a couple things. Uh, just NBA storylines that are standing out to me. That I want to get your opinion on. Zion Williams, number, former number one pick, have missed uh, what about forty one games this year. He's pretty much missed most of half his career. Is is he officially? Uh, um, what's the kid? Not Jason Odom's, but Odom's. The, Greg, the, Odin. Greg, Greg Odin. Odin. Greg Odin. Is Greg Odin? Yeah. Is he officially Greg Odin? Not yet. I was. I would say yeah, because he has he has a step on the court. I mean, but. I wouldn't say he's Greg Oden because Greg Oden didn't actually get on the court and dominate and show right. what to do. But he's he's getting that he's going that route, man. And it, and it's sad, but he's going that route because I forgot he even played basketball. I mean, yeah. you, ain't, you ain't seen him. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think one of the things that's different is like Roscoe just pointed out the whole idea that he. Um, that Williamson has played in the NBA. So he's, he's, you've been able to see those flashes from him. Odin never really got to play. Um, uh, the only thing about Williamson, man, <clears throat> I'm going to say he's not Greg Odin yet because I think there's still a chance he can recover. Some of this has to do, which is a thing I've thought about Williamson since he burst onto the scene, his body type with his, in combination with his skill set, that the whole jumping out of the gym thing and, yeah. it's tough on your body man and so if you are that big and if you are doing it that explosively and that far above the rim and you're having that kind of impact on your legs i mean he blew out a shoe on tv that was a thing that happened like the shoe was just like forget it i don't i don't want to participate in this game anymore <laughs> done. Done. it exited his foot and got out of there um so when you think about that i think you know he's he's uh you know that takes a toll on your body and i think maybe some of these injuries that Williamson probably could adjust his game. He probably could still have a career. I think he's going to have to get into some sort of different kind of shape. I don't know what, you know, where he's at in that right now. Obviously we haven't seen him in a while, but I think there's a path for him to still be a very good NBA player. I don't, I think it's a bit premature to, you know, to, to call him. And I don't want to say a bust cause I don't think that's fair to Odin, but you know, to kind of, uh, to kind of write him off, to, to write him off. It's too premature to write him off. I think I am going to emphatically uh, stamp him with the label of bust. Oh. Um, oh. I think if he was the 10th the pick in the draft, if he was the 15th pick in the draft, I think I would give him more grace. Uh, but considering he was the number one pick in the draft, Considering that he has shown those flashes that you guys are talking about, but hasn't been able to consistently live up to those things to pull the Pelicans where we've all seen his potential can take him because he has not taken care of his body in the way that he should have to be available for his team. I'm going to just classify him as a bust right now today, because I think if you haven't done it by this point, uh, what is he four or five years in? Yeah. Um, I, I just don't think it's going to happen um, moving forward. So I'm going to stamp it now for me, um, and I think it moves forward. Uh, Roscoe, what are some things that you've seen um, in the NBA that stands out to you uh, this week? Hmm, let me see. Mm. I, I can't really think about what stands out to me. But uh, Yeah, my hairline was I, receding. I, I, I probably would put on a hat, too. I, I feel that. I, I, I have something that's on my mind that – um. Like I, I've been saying for weeks now that certain somebodies, I'm not saying who, you two, 
have been saying that these boys here will not make it to the playoffs. And they are like <clears throat> a game away from, what, the sixth seed? They don't even have to do the play in right now. Four games left. They're game away. Do you hear me? This They're also. The, the, the Western Conference is on notice. The Lakers have showed up. I'm just they saying, are, that's what stuck out to me. The that's Lakers what, are one injury away from irrelevance. It that's everybody. Look, look, look at look at it now. Now, if, if if I was a Mavericks fan, I'd be pissed right now. But I'm not. So I, I'm gonna keep this on for right now while you while somebody else talks because I don't have to say that. You just look at the logo, <laughs> purple and gold, <laughs> all day, baby. I don't think the Mavericks fans are mad about the Lakers. They have plenty to be mad about on their own. <laughs> and what do they have to be mad about? I mean, well, I guess they're talking Kyrie about they're talking about they might not have Kyrie much longer. They're talking about shutting him down for the year. Um, that thing with Luca is not working out, as I kind of thought. Um, that whole situation to me is hilarious, since I'm not you know like a Mavs fan or really anyone any any one team's basketball fan. I think the Mavs have bigger fish to fry than the limping Lakers of L.A. So, you know, I think that there's a... The limping Lakers of L.A. Let me highlight that. that the, was limping, the limping that Lakers was of L.A. Of course it was limping. good. Of course it was good. Of course it was good. Anyway, I think that... I think the Mavs are hilarious. I'm, I'm, it's very interesting to see how everything is going sideways hey. there. Um I think the biggest stories of the postseason, which will be coming up here very shortly, are the, is, the, is in the Eastern Conference. The Bucks have the best record in basketball. No one talks about the Milwaukee Bucks. Has anyone noticed this? Like, yeah. consistently, it's in Milwaukee. Yeah. It's in yeah. Milwaukee. I mean, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe that's part of the problem. I think it's because people don't know how to say Giannis's name. But I also think <laughs> that the Eastern Conference is the much more compelling conference this year. You've got the Bucks. The Bucks doing well as we just said best record in the nba the celtics are right there behind them and the celtics are you know when the celtics are good it's usually good for east eastern conference basketball you know what i mean like they're you know they're they're in it to win it um so and then and then somehow the phil the the philadelphia is in third which is crazy to me you know what i mean so there's there's some intriguing things happening in the east coast the West Coast is like uh, you have the Nuggets, and you know I don't think they're going to do much. Uh, they have the best record in the West, but I doubt they'll do much after the first round or two of the playoffs. So you know, there's it still kind of remains to be seen. But if you know anything about the NBA, you know when the regular season ends, it's like a whole nother season starts at the end of, at the end of the year. So you really don't know what to expect. You can just expect to probably not see Kyrie, um, and you might see some version. Of a uh, of a handful of the Lakers who stay healthy enough to play in the postseason. We wax at everything in the West. The the Lakers going to have to keep winning to make sure they avoid that uh, play in, just for health reasons, right? Um, Please, just for health reasons. I, I just, that's one thing I want to uh, add to that conversation. Wait, one last thing. One last thing uh, to throw in. Sorry, sorry, I should have mentioned this. One thing that is compelling to me on the West Coast: KD's back for the Suns. Suns are in fourth. Considering how iffy the top of the West is for teams in the playoff in the postseason, I think that the Suns might be a team to watch if uh, if that all starts to kind of come together as the playoffs go on. It ain't gonna come together because they ain't had that much time to play with each other. But anyway, go ahead. No, I think that's a, a valid point. They were just in the championship a few years ago, so you know. You know who else is in the championship a few years ago? The Lakers, not like you know. Yeah. Were they? Actually, yeah, I, actually I, I, Come on now. They I forgot. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. I don't remember. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. Do that. So <laughs> 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 this week in this week in <laughs> baseball. <laughs> now we just started our opening weekends. I think, you know, we've been talking about it for a while, right? Um, we gotta bring up the pitch clock again. We gotta bring up the pitch clock again because I love it. Go ahead, Roscoe. Talk to us. I, I I I love the pitch clock and and you 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 shared something with with us in the group chat that um. Look, it, you want it, me to run down those stats? I I'll run, run, run down. Run down the stats. I, let me hear those stats again. Let, let, let me run. Let me run down. All right. Now, now, so, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. While he read the stats, I want y'all to pay attention to this young man's face down here. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So games twenty twenty three fifty games played. 
2022, 49 games played. 2023, the time of the games have been two hours, 38 minutes. 2022, it was three hours and nine minutes. Batting average, right? Batting average. 2023, uh, it was 245 uh, versus 2022, 230. Oh. Hmm. If we look at stolen bases, 83% 83% of the bases have been stolen in 2022 was 67.4%. And there's only been 40 uh, pitching clock violations, which is an average of 0.8. Less than one a game. Now, now, as I said at the beginning, I don't know what episode it was, when Fred was, you know, doing what he do about crotchety old baseball and the old ways and all that stuff there. And I told him that if you are a competitor, you're just going to adjust your game. It's going to make the game better, and it's going to make them play better. Now, the stolen base thing, it probably has something to do with the bases being bigger. But the pitch clock. There's also a new pickoff rule. You want want to go down that route, too? I'm just saying. I'm just telling you. We don't have another 30 minutes to explain that again. All I'm saying to you is this, man. The pitch clock is working. The players love it. The coaches love it. The fans love it. Do you understand that? The fans love it. You don't have to sit there for three hours watching somebody scratch their balls and spit tobacco. You know what I'm saying? As they contemplate stepping into the batter's box. Those numbers that you just read are stupid, and I'll tell you why. (laughs) These are all issues that people claim to be issues with the game of baseball that – aren't really issues so if your intent is to speed up the game of course a pitch clock is going to do that however i don't think i have never heard a baseball fan in my life say you know what these games would be so much great so much better if the average batting average was up eight points from one year to the next that's silly obviously this is slanted to benefit the offenses it's like every change major league baseball and every other sport has done in the last 10 years it's they're good if that's what you want to see. If you're not, a, if you are a person who was already okay with the game before, then these changes are not necessarily. I don't think they're good at all. I think they're bad. But arguing that this is working towards some sort of end is silly because they're only accomplishing the thing that we knew that they were being put in to do in the first place, which is artificially create more offense. And offense wins eyes. That's what they're trying to do. I suppose, but again, this goes back to the original issue I have with the pitch clock. Is this being done for fans that you haven't, that you don't have yet, and you're hoping to get, or is this being done for the fans who have been loyal to your sport for a number of years and liked it just fine the way it was? It's clear that the answer is to try to get people who wouldn't normally watch baseball to watch baseball. Maybe that works. Maybe it doesn't, but if it doesn't work, the risk you run is that you're going to have fans who don't watch your sport anymore, and then you're not going to have the new fans that you needed to replace them. I was thinking, go, 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 go ahead, Mister P. Nah, because I, you know, I, 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 I see your passion and I match you. It is total nonsense. Baseball is dying. Full stop. Baseball dying in America. Yes. Full stop. Around the world, yes, it's exploding, it's growing, it's growing, it's glowing, right? We talked about that on the When It Hits the Fan podcast, which you're listening to right now in your AirPods. Here we go. Make sure you go back and listen to the older podcast. Like and subscribe. So what we're, what I'm jumping to is you are, you have to acknowledge within this context that you have to do something different. You're not just catering to the new fans. You're also catering to the old fans. One of the things that the Rays are doing and some other teams are doing, they're starting their games at 640. Mm. 640 with a two-hour time frame, guess what time you're going to go home? You're going to be able to go to those weekday games. Oh yeah. You're going to be able to go to more games, and it's not going to be taxing on your time in terms of your work schedule and being able to show up. That's important. That's taking care of not only the new fans, and the old fans that you have as well, right? People's time is important. You show people you care about them by acknowledging the time. Baseball hasn't switched anything since the designated hitter. I appreciate that clearly your love language is time, but I just want to counter with this. <laughs> they love language. 
I think <laughs> that you're, I think that, cause I'm, there's really nothing wrong with, with what you're saying. And I actually can, I, I get both sides of this. So I'm not trying to be like a person who can't see the other side. My point is baseball fans understand the game of baseball, right? So the fans who are still around are the ones who already liked your sport. They're the ones who cared about it. The idea that shortening these games is going to get new people to like the sport. I disagree with, I don't think that there's any proof to, to see that. We'll have to see what the Rays do with attendance wise. That's a good number to look at considering what you just threw out there. All I'm saying to you, there's risks involved with alienating longtime fans and not attracting the new fans. I also agree that Amer- the baseball is dying in America. Like you said, that issue has nothing to do with the length of the games. That issue has to do with a sport that cannot get out of its own way, a league that cannot get out of its own way. It's always tinkering with things that don't need to be tinkered with that decides one year you should have guys smashing the home run run record by eight to 10 home runs in a season. And then the next year you should, you know, maybe you should do something to the balls when they're not flying out of the park as fast. Major league baseball is always trying to pull the strings to bring new people in. They need to do a better job of reaching people who already like the game, who they have, alienated over the years this is not a way to do that one other thing about the pitch clock that we have not said on here the main thing that i don't like about it is that in a very sudden way it fundamentally alters the game unlike any other rule changes i've seen in any of the major sports well look baseball is like any other business out there they're always looking for change they're always looking to get new customers and they're always you know they're trying to re-innovate and all that stuff there I I I I put baseball with the changes now as if I compare it to grandparents. Your grandparents, you know what I'm saying? Your grandparents, they love each other. They've been around each other for so long. They're not going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? But I bet you your granddaddy wish that your grandma he had a pitch clock. I don't think so. No, he put a pitch clock on to bring his sandwich faster and his beer faster. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit faster, you know? Just, <laughs> he loves that house dress, you know what I'm saying? But if he changed it to something else, and oh, man. Fitting, he wouldn't mind, you know what I'm saying, taking her to the Golden Corral for supper. Yeah, I said supper. Taking the Golden Corral for supper, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So change is good, even though he, he'll never leave. He'll never leave your grandmother. But he does wish that she moved just a little bit faster because he got things to do, like watch Matlock or, you know, whatever they do, old people do. So that's all I'm saying. Murder, she wrote. Murder, she wrote. (laughs) (laughs) No. Right. (laughs) Price is right. So, nah, and like I said, is time will tell. We don't know. It's still too early to tell fully how it will impact. But I think it's something that we got to keep monitoring and looking at. But I think the early returns have been emphatically on the affirmative um, thus far. And um, it's just, it is what it is. Go raise. Uh, Go raise. That's what, that's what we're, that's what we're not really talking about enough is that, (laughs) is that the raise are capitalizing, are are capitalizing on the rules changes. Unlike anybody else, because they're off to the best start in franchise history. The Rays are five and oh, they won their fifth straight game last uh, tonight to start the season. They are kind of on fire. I ain't going to lie. Uh, Wander Franco's hitting everything. The Rays are going to win the World Series. So um, I'm tired of reading tweets about the Yankees all the time. I don't understand why everyone does this. Uh, we don't even need to know about the Yankees because the Rays are 5-0. and There is no other team in Major League Baseball that is that has yet to lose. And, you know, I'd like to hear more about the Rays. Can't everyone just talk about the Rays all the time? Why do we not do this? All right. I'm ready to talk about the Rays. I think a large product of their success has been the pitch clock. I think. (laughs) 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 No, like seriously. I think with the time in the batter block and the time in the batter's box, they don't, they, if you're, sometimes you're thinking too much and you overthink it. Right. Mm-hmm. So they have players with talent. They have young players with talent. Right. Like a Rosarina, like Wanda Franco, like Andy Diaz. So having these players who can play, who have to just set up and they, hey, we got to go to work. Boom. Next play. They already they don't have time to think and process and get too far in their heads. And I think it's giving them advantage. And even their pitching because of the clock, the, the Rays pound the strike zone. 
right? Yep. It's, it's what they do as a staff and what they's all what they've always done. So now those batters who who have their their timing sped up to especially to start the season, they're getting strikes. If you ain't swinging, you gonna strike out. So I think that's uh, it's a big advantage that the pitch clock has afforded the Rays the opportunities other teams uh, haven't necessarily uh, caught up to the speed of the game yet. I think those are some interesting points, and I'll say this. Uh, the Rays are the least of my worries about the pitch clock. I think that the Rays have been doing these these things the past few years where they're always on the cutting edge of Major League Baseball and the trends. And in fact, in recent years, I think you could argue that they're a trendsetter. Uh, they don't even follow the trends. I think all of this, the quickened gameplay and stuff like that, the way the Rays have gone about it is the way I would have preferred to have seen this change come about in Major League Baseball players where teams just see the natural benefit of not dragging out between pitches, you know what I mean? Of kind of hurrying up the pace of the game to kind of keep these young minds, like because because Roscoe said that a lot of times in the whole pitch clock discussion, to keep these young minds sort of focused in a way where there's not all this time between pitches for them to lose focus and, and kind of take themselves out. The Rays are the kind of team that is suited to succeed in a in an ever-changing baseball world. It's what they've been doing now for years and years. It's actually, to me, a big part of that franchise's identity. That's why that's one of the things I love about them. They're able to uh to not get left behind. They've never played an old style or old brand of baseball. I tell people all the time: if you've never seen a major league baseball game, if you're not a fan of major league baseball, Watch the Tampa Bay Rays. If you're not entertained by the Tampa Bay Rays, you are just not going to be entertained watching baseball. That is a fact. That's, to me, what makes the Rays special. That's why I feel like more people should be talking about the start that they're on to and talking less about the New York Yankees, who will not uh, finish in front of the Rays in the, in the, in the division. So, in other words, you, you, like the, you like the new rules because the Rays have been doing it for a long time. <laughs> No roundabout said that you like it. No, I'm I telling heard. you that the no, Rays, no, 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 no. the you Rays explained. are uniquely. You already explained yourself, and you said that <laughs> they do exactly what the rules are right now. And if you don't like baseball, something is wrong with you because the Rays are doing it right. It's because they created you a team said. that works that works in that but, format. But that's the point. That's that's the point. They saw the Rays and said, you know what. We need to change our game to fit that because the Rays are doing it right. And therefore, you old curmudgeons can either fall in line or fall behind. I can't be an old curmudgeon because I was already rooting for the Rays when they were doing things like this before the rules were necessary. So, uh, on top of, uh, speaking of contradictions, the once formidable Houston um, I don't know. Uh, Astro trains have <laughs> Houston velvet necks. <laughs> feather feather necks. You know, you heard the leather necks. <laughs> the feather necks have went down in an abhorrent heap uh, as they lost to the St. Louis Battlehawks in XFL news. So that's kind of standing out to me. I I wonder how far they'll how far they'll fall especially with the rise of the Seattle Sea Dragons and the Battle Hawks, you know, uh, performing so well. Let me just stop you right there, buddy, and tell you that the Houston Roughnecks, official name, are still in first place in the Southern Division there in the XFL. So what you have is you're having a little bit of a competitive thing happening in the North with the Seattle sea monsters and the dc whatever they're called <laughs> and the, right. the whatever they're called and then there's some other team that i don't care about they're also up there so you have a little bit of a log jam at the top of the uh the, the north good division yeah <laughs> i guess if you want to call it that but the roughnecks on the strength of their very powerful start they are still in first place and i believe that they see that they're in the weaker division and they decided hey Let's just take it easy the next few games, save ourselves for when it matters. And that's where you see that's where they're at right now. Right now, they're just pacing themselves. They're ready to make them make a move. Think of it like a marathon or a distance race. They're just kind of like, hey, man, next next corner on that next turn, I'm going to come in on the inside and I'm going to get them. So I expect the, the Roughnecks to turn it around like true champions that they're that they really are this season anyway, uh, you know, here in the next couple of weeks. 
I'd Not expect at several all. wins in a row for them. Not at all. I, I, I would say this. Okay. Even though the defenders lost to the Guardians. The I, lowly, I, I, the lowly, the lowly, winless okay. Guardians. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, <laughs> as I put my... That's a ridiculous piece of headgear. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Look. <laughs> This is why I think they lost, man. You know what I'm saying? The Rock made a a Simon call. If you ever watch Mark, you know who Simon is. Simon in the sky box. <laughs> sky Simon. box. <laughs> so they made a Simon call. It was like, look, Orlando hasn't won a game, man, and it's not looking good. And the Florida fans love football. You got to give them a W against the number one team in the league. You know what I'm saying? And do it this week so it don't really affect you by the time, you know, we get to the People's Championship game. All right, bet. So, all I'm saying is, the defenders will win the People's uh, belt. They will have to de uh, defeat Ho Hogan or whatever to get the rest <laughs> of them. But <laughs> all the thing, I, I, I also have to add that the Houston Turkey Necks will end up in the pot of green. <laughs> Cook real fine. With some, you know what I'm saying? Put some hot sauce on them because that's all they were for right now. Is you ain't about nothing. Put the rice, you know what I'm saying? Smoke them. You know, you got to season them up real good. Smoke. You got to smoke the Houston turkey necks. But they've been smoked. They've been smoked. They've been smoked. <laughs> they've been smoked good. That's why they'll go good in some greens. They go great in some greens right now. That's why the people's belt is coming to DC with the their uh, bill snake. So handle that XFL. Holla at me. I'll let you borrow the belt for the championship game. <laughs> the <laughs> NFL news. Um, the only story that kind of really jumped out to me was, uh, you know, the troubled, <laughs> you know, yeah. Jalen Carter yeah. is, is made his way in the news again in another news cycle, but not in a positive way by saying that he won't uh, interview with teams who are outside the top 10. Which, I mean, on the surface of it is just ridiculous, especially with the amount of teams that's trade up. Like, if a team likes you, yeah, and they, you know, I mean, you create a buzz and you create an energy about yourself. I mean, this isn't, you're not Deion Sanders in, you know, in 1989. You're, you're Jalen Carter. You're, you're, you're a dominant defensive player, but I don't know if you're a generational defensive player. You know, I think Jalen Carter. <laughs> Jalen Carter appears to have uh, a poor judgment at times, and this could be an example of that. I don't know who he said this to, so I'm not exactly sure the context in which it was said. It's a dumb thing to say. Um, it's just objectively dumb. Like you said, there's any number of things that could happen. You don't just because you talk to a team that's not in the top 10 doesn't yeah. mean that they can't trade up to get you. Also, you know, a lot of these teams in the top 10, just like us, they can read the news. They know what's been going on with you the last few months. And they might say, you know, hey, man, we read about you and we really don't want to talk to you. So if one or two of those teams decides not to talk to you, you don't want the 11th or the 12th pick to talk to you. I mean, this is this is not smart. Um, it's especially not smart considering kind of what's happened with him post playing career at Georgia. I don't know, man, like uh uh, this is a bit of a gamble, so I guess we're just going to have to see how this plays out for Jalen okay. Carter. Good right. luck to him. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I would have done that. I equate him to um, how Warren Sapp fell. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he's he, he's he's that guy. You know what I'm saying? He's decent, but he's he's falling just like that, and that's how he's going to fall. And well, but, but Warren Sapp was a little bit different, though, because that was just like a, a weed thing last minute, last second. It wasn't like... It was, it was, we, look, they told us it was just weed. It was more than just that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just don't say, oh, man, we ain't going to draft you because of weed. Because, shit, everybody in the league was on weed and dope and all that stuff. So, you know, it was, they said that to appease us. You know what I'm saying? But we all know it was probably more than that. Just like, you know, with Jalen Carter. But you can't go out and say who you're not going to talk to because you don't hold the cards right now. You're not in the driver's seat. Hopefully, he's not in the driver's seat. Please. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> Cheers to that. Um, 
USF, University of South Florida, the best university this side of um, the Atlantic Ocean. Um, they hired a new well, head basketball coach and a new head football coach. Their head football coach is Alex Galesh. Now, we're going to introduce this segment in which we call Alex Galesh Thinks. Well, I would start off, I would say that Alex Galesh thinks I still have a year of eligibility <laughs> left, and they sent me this in the mail. <laughs> like come down and try for spring football. So I'll be there, Alex. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? If you if you want me, I I'll show up. Alex Galesh thinks that spring football is played on top of old mattresses. Oh <laughs> uh, Alex Galesh thinks that USF is gonna beat Alabama. Alex Galesh. Like they play in Alabama Tech. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Galesh thinks the University of South Florida is in South Florida. <laughs> and that is our Alex Galesh segment for the week. Now, <laughs> fellas, let's go to things that matter only to us. That matter only to us. All right. Uh, let's, Fred, let's kick this off. Uh, well, a couple things real quick for this. Uh, one I'm wearing, so I'm wearing right now what is an Asheville blues hat. So this is an Asheville blues hat. I just got it today. It's kind of fresh here. I'll show it to the camera for you. Actually, oh, I'll show oh, you the patch. Oh, oh, that's nice. Lift it up a little bit. Okay. No, up, up, up some more. A little bit, a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, the this is a this is I ordered this from the Asheville Tourist baseball team, minor league baseball team. I've mentioned them on here before. The Asheville the tourists are wearing the Asheville Blues uniforms one time this season. The Asheville Blues were a Negro Southern League team that played in Asheville in the 40s and 50s. They won the uh they won that league's championship in 46 and 47. They played their home games at McCormick Field, which is where the tourists play right now. Um, they were, uh, they were founded in 1944 and, uh, they almost pulled off a three peat, but came just short in that third season in Asheville. Um, this league is one, this league was one of the minor league, essentially the minor leagues that fed into the, uh, into the larger Negro baseball league, uh, players like Satchel Page played in this league. This was a big deal in the South. There were teams in Chattanooga, kind of every single Southern city you could probably think of at some point in time likely had a team in this league. Uh, so I think it's really cool that the tourists are bringing these uniforms and these hats out this year to honor this league. This is an important part of the local history here in um, Western North Carolina. And uh, I was really happy to see that they put this hat out. So my hat came in today. I figured I would wear it and talk about it tonight for one of the things that mattered to me. Are you going to do a story on the um, Valley Echo about this? Uh, no, I hadn't planned on it, but I guess I could, couldn't I? I do do that. <laughs> I need one of them hats, bro. Yeah, also, speaking of, speaking of the Negro Leagues, another thing that came up that comes up and stuff that matters to me, I told you guys last week that MLB The Show 23 was out. It is out. And this year, that's one of the things they did. They always have legendary players on this game, so you can get you know the greatest versions of some of the players. They secretly added in some guys this year, like Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. They did it without a lot of fanfare, which I thought was pretty interesting, but they're on the game now. But also they added a bunch of players from the Negro League. So you can play as Satchel Page on there. You can play as all of these different uh, superstars from that time, uh, which I think is a pretty cool feature on there too. There's also some pretty cool aesthetics involved uh, as far as the, you know, the, the uniforms and the gloves and the things like that, uh, the little details, which are some of the things that I think make the show such a great sports franchise. Um, if you like video games, I would recommend you go out and get the show. You don't even have to go out anywhere. You can just download it, man. It's 2023. And uh, so that's one of the, that's another thing that matters. I got just one question. Um, yes, is Sammy Sosa white or black in the game? <laughs> <laughs> he still looks, he still looks like the Sammy Sosa that everyone else would remember in, uh, okay. in a Cubs uniform. So you got to get to a certain level to get the white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to evolve into the current. You got to go Super Saiyan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super Saiyan Sammy Sosa. <laughs> Super Saiyan Sammy Sosa. <laughs> All right. Um, 
I get I guess it's on me. The thing that I care about is that um I actually got myself a, a record player and um an old school record player for you kids out there, the vinyl, you know, the big vinyl records, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I like to and I like to play my my vinyls. And I just have a question, like, okay, I started my collection off. I don't know, I don't know if, if y'all think Well Michael Jackson, I'm sure. Relax. Jeez. Yeah, man. Spoiler the alert, buddy. One. Oh, see, I I, uh, I knew it. I knew I, it. My mother, <laughs> my mother, my mother had that record. I used to listen to it on her record player when I was a kid. I'm very you know, familiar. Because he's laying down. You yep. know what I'm saying? There's you a little know, tiger in there. You open it up. You know, you see the. Oh, oh, let me get it. I get it right. You laying down. There's that the, tiger. Yeah. Now my second one. The second one that I have is this one. Mm, that's a heavy hitter. So, wow. I'll, I'll just pose this question to what else do you think I need to add to my collection? Rick James. I mean, it, it, what's that? Rick James. Remember yeah. with, uh, yeah. on yeah, the post? It, it, on the po- yeah. yeah. You're super freaks. I mean, it, it, you got to think now. It could be rap, R&B, rock, whatever. Well, I was just thinking about when I was a kid. I remember that, uh, you Rick know, James. we used to jam that. Those were three albums that you, well, those three would be the three albums that I remember from a kid, like when I when we had those vinyls. How about you, Fred? Um, you know, I think if you're thinking from that era, depending on what genre you want to go off into, uh, there's a few options. One album I specifically remember on my mom's record player that was amongst those two albums that you just showed and others. Do you remember that they actually pressed an album for We Are the World? Do you guys remember We Are the World? Does yeah, anyone yeah, yeah. remember they had We album. Are the World? Yeah. They had an actual album, a vinyl album for We Are the World, which was a great thing. I couldn't even see us doing a We Are the World as a culture right now, but it was an awesome thing. Um, and another album, another album that I always think of when people bring up vinyls for whatever reason, same time, completely different genre of music, is Kenny Rogers, The Gambler. My mom had that on an album when I was a uh, when I was young, and it has great songs. It sounds good as a vinyl album. But I, I also I also got this one. This is this is a oh a, a, a left fielder. So you were on the right track. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. And Willie yeah. Nelson is obviously an icon. Um, I would like to know some of the songs. You don't have to read a complete list. What are some of the songs on that Willie Nelson's greatest hit? Songs you got. Blue eyes crying in the rain. Great song. If you got the money, I've got the time. Georgia on my mind. My heroes have always been cowboys and yep. so forth, man. Yep, yep, yep. Man, I mean, I, so as you're going off, I'm thinking about anything from the Motown era, Teddy Pendergrass. Yep. I'm thinking of. Oh, wow. Oh, Donnie Hathaway. So you have been oh. starting a collection. Yeah, I was going to say, this is real. Yeah. I'm on it now. Oh. oh. <laughs> Al, Gre- Al Green was so far ahead of his time. I, that's a whole different conversation, got, maybe for another to, episode. See that, yeah, I got to keep my cold train on, you know. Then I got also, also, this is, I had to get this one because it was something that was played readily in my house. Oh, the Curtis Mayfield, and this is this is also one I had to I had to get. You know what I'm saying? Ah, so, so that's just some of my collection that I have right now. So I'm just looking for more suggestions of you know what I'm saying what I what else I should add to this thing. So that's that's what I care about right now, man. Hey, that's fire, man. Um, wow. I do not have anything to top any one of those. <laughs> you don't care about nothing. I well, only thing that I really kind of care about is I changed my dissertation topic, and I'm sure that nobody cares about that. But it's Doctor. really <laughs> it's, doctor opinion. Doctor, opinion. not no. yet. But I'm trying to get there. So I have a um, I have a literature review that's due this Friday. That um, yeah, I got to do some work on. <laughs> so, yeah. um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be some um, rough days, but I'm I'm pretty confident I could get. I just want to. So that's pretty much on my mind. That's what I care about. I want to finish strong, so I could. Uh, my other two classes, I'm gonna get an A, but this one class, I need to finish this literature review to make sure I get an A in that class too. So keep my um 100 record going. Wow, 
Well, that's a that's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say it, it is and it isn't. It's, it's, it's not one of those things that matters. It only probably matters to me Definitely. that I want to finish with a, a A, but I don't have to. If I get a B, actually, I do have a low key thing. I'm trying to make a B um, just because I like You're trying I, to make a B. I'm trying, but I just keep making these A's, man. It's kind of oh, hard. Oh, man. That's a oh, bummer. Man. <laughs> Poor you. It's rough. So, honestly, it's a, it's a low-key thing I'm kind of trying to do. But even as I'm approaching this B, I'm thinking, like, I don't know if I could I could complete this you can. And, and, and get the B. You you will never, ever, 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 ever on purpose make a B, sir. I'm, I'm trying to make a B. I think I think you can do it. Thank you, Brad. I, I appreciate the support. I think you can make a B. Uh, I, I think so. The only B you can make is, never mind. All right, so I appreciate you guys for being here with us. I appreciate you rocking out. Roscoe, Roscoe you have any last man. words? Oh, uh, my last words are, man, be nice, be kind, hug on your loved ones, and you know what I'm saying? Drink some wine. <laughs> That's all. Fred, what you got for us? I just want to say, when it hits the fan, episode 13, it's in the books, so let us know what you think about it. Leave us some comments. Leave us some feedback. Thank you guys for watching. Catch you on the flip. Peace. Peace. Don't hang up, Fred.